We are going off the rails. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Disney show dedicated to tangents. I am your host and conductor, Craig Williams. And today I am joined alongside by a bunch of great people, including Jackie Gailey. Hi, everybody. Rhino. Hello. And Denny Sunderly. Hi there. Before we get started, I need to remind you, this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content and you want to support us, please consider booking your next vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money and you get that world-class level of support from the Dreams Unlimited Travel agents. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Okay, today's episode is going to be a fun one. We are going to give you just the absolute worst trip planning tips for your upcoming vacation to Walt Disney World. None of these tips will help you in any way, but maybe, maybe if you pay attention to them, you will listen and do the exact opposite of things that we could suggest that you should do. And I'm going to kick things off with mine. I think the first terrible tip that you should never, ever, ever do and you need to avoid like a plague, is if you see a line that is over 60 minutes, do not jump into it. So in this case, I guess my tip would be, if you see a line that's 60 minutes, go ahead, just jump right into it. It'll be good. There you go. I did it backwards myself. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, but... Yeah, I'm the one who's. I explained it and then I double negative myself. So, (laughs) your first terrible tip is jump in every line that's 60 minutes or longer. It is a very good advice. You will be able to get so much done on your vacation and you're going to love it because of that. No. Can I, I be next? I got on a 60-minute line the other day and got out five minutes into it. What was the 60-minute line? Making Minis Runaway Railway. You just My couldn't... friend was like, I've seen all the Star Wars stuff. And I was like, well, this is one other new ride. And, and they were like, the queue's all in the sun. It was too hot. It was too hot all the time. Too hot here. Hotter than that fire. That is a rough got, It was oh, The humidity this last weekend was like being wrapped in flypaper. It was just like. It was gross. Disgusting. Yeah. So if you see an uncovered queue, hop in that one. It'll move a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> no. So uh, just kidding. So obviously, there are a lot of lines at Walt Disney World, and a lot of them get bad. But in it, like if anyone ever tells you, well, you're, you know, just go and get in the line because you never know it could get longer. Don't follow that advice that is a terrible tip uh if you do not have my disney experience downloaded to your phone if you don't have a smartphone step one go to uh, any (laughs) wireless provider and get a smartphone because it is absolutely necessary for your vacation yes there are tip boards posted up in the parks that can help Mm. you with that information but it's just easier having your smartphone in your pocket with all of that information for you that is readily available to what you know what wait times are. And you can keep an eye on it. You can start to see what's going on from it. You know, if a line is really that long and you really want to do it, be be my guest. Like Rhino, go get in, go get in line for that 60-minute wait on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. But in almost every case, in every case, just jump in the line at the end of the night. You might still have a little bit of a longer wait, but really, once that park closes, you have to think of it. There's, you know, the, everyone's working to get out of there as quickly right. as possible. Uh, that is, as someone who worked in theme parks, that is the honest truth. You start when you know that the park is closed and you want to go home, you start making sure that you don't have any empties, that you're getting as many people on as quickly as possible, not slowing down because you want to go home. And so, yeah, you, there's always room to wait for some of those longer waits at the end of the day. If you're, if you're an early riser and you can get to the park for rope drop, of course, you know, you can, you can usually manage that, but yeah, don't, don't get in line for a ride. That's too long. Uh, You know, if, if it's, If it is something like Flight of Passage and you just you really want to do it because you've only heard about it for years and years and never experienced it, whatever. But how do you how do you have a good experience after that? How? 
I mean, unless you have to, like, unless you are here for, because when you're visiting, you have only so much time and whoever's in your traveling party is or is not having a good day or whatever, you might have to get in that 60 minute line and grin and bear it. But the, I have a, absolutely, if you go at the end of the night, the very end of the night, you could score a five minute wait for Minnie and Mickey. So that's, that's definitely, but you brought up something, Craig, that, um, for me, I would think a terrible tip would be do not download my Disney experience ahead of time. Do not look at it. Do not become familiar with it in the least. Do all of that in the middle of the magic kingdom on a 95 degree hot and sunny day. Yeah, with the hat with the battery at 20%. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do it then. No, definitely download my Disney experience. Get to know it. Uh, check out the map. If you're not familiar with the parks, you know, learn all the ins and outs on the park maps. Um, you can even, you can find resort maps on there as well. If you're staying on property, you can check out wait times. Like you said, like see what they, let's see what they are. Keep an eye on it the week before your visit so that you can start to gauge what might be a good time of day to visit different, um, attractions. But, it, mobile order is king. It just is during these times. And yes, there is um, a cashier at every uh, quick service location for those who do not have smartphones. But you you want to know because you don't want to, you know, everybody in your party is starving and you're trying to find a mobile order window, you find one and then you've got to figure out and then you've got to load in your credit card and save it and all that jazz. Like do all of that before you get here so that food time isn't more intense than it needs to be. Oh, yeah. I, I think another terrible tip to give people right now, and uh, I think the past month or so has definitely made this one more apparent uh, in, in a lot of people's mind, but I think it's a terrible tip now to say you have to stay on property when visiting mm. Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. I do not. I don't think that's the case anymore. Um, I'm going to say it too. As a person who does not travel to Walt Disney World, I know I'm not as entitled to say that because I'm not, you know, I'm not putting my hard earned money on it now. But I thinking about it from the aspect of me, if I was to move away from Florida and come back, would I be adamant on staying at Disney property? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Not not anymore. Not when it's there's so many other hotels around the area that are at a more affordable price. Not when, you know, vacation rentals have become such a big thing over yes. time. I, I, I get being inside the bubble and I get being a part of that, uh, that it, it makes you feel special. And I am so happy that my parents strive to keep us on property when we were growing up, but that's when there were the perks associated with it, no matter what level you stayed at, where you had the option like way back in the 90s when if you stayed at a hotel, you could buy access to the E-Ride nights for mm. $15 to stay at Magic Kingdom for hours after only riding the big attractions. And then eventually that morphing into, into early magic hours and extra magic hours later at night. And there was all these perks and you know, that's before it costs money to park your car at it. That was back when you had the magical express for free. And yeah, all these, all these things are just slowly, slowly, slowly going away. And that's, it's very apparent to all of us. And yeah, if I was put in the shoes of a person coming from outside, coming to Orlando, I don't know if I would say, yeah, yeah. I have to stay on property. Yeah. I agree with that too totally do because it one of the key reasons that we decided to stay on property when we were first planning our trips from back home in seattle we you know the biggest deal was magical express the biggest deal was not having to pay for transportation to and from the airport mm -hmm. i mean because we were disneyland goers and we were used to paying for transportation either from lax or from the john wayne airport and it was not inexpensive so when we heard that Disney's Magical Express whisks you off from the airport and right back to the airport at the end of your vacation, that was a big deal. And just as a side note, I can't believe it's August and we still don't have any idea if there's going to be something replacing that. So as of right now, the time we're recording this show, that's just going away at the end of this year. 
And so if you want to stay off property, well, it's going to, you're going to have to either get a rental car Mm -hmm. or you're going to have to pay an Uber or whatever. And that's going to add, that's going to add cost to your, your hotel stay off property, which, you know, I mean, let's face it. There's a lot of options off property. I I mean, there there really are a lot of real good ones too that include breakfast. And Mm -hmm. so if you don't have to pay for breakfast each morning, that could make up the cost of your rental car right there. We, um, one year we decided to rent, um, a a vacation home, um, that was just right down 192 off of Formosa Gardens. And it, so very close, especially close to Animal Kingdom. But, um, but it was for a fraction of the cost that it was going to cost us to stay on property. We had an entire house with a pool and because we were vacationing with three generations. And so we had kids that got to have their own space plus, you know, a, a game system in each of their rooms. And we had grandma and grandpa who had their own dedicated space and, and we had ours, like it was enough because vacationing with friends and family kind of, you know, you need your own space from time to time. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to have that, but we were also able to have breakfast in our own kitchen and throw the kids in the pool if they wanted to be like, and it was a fraction of the cost. So yes, we had to rent a car and yes, we had to pay to park at the Disney parks. Um, But when you looked at the overall savings of being off property, it was worth it. Like we yeah. still came out ahead. Um, I do, I, I understand the, um, the allure of being on property. I love being on property. Yeah. I really do. I want to be in the bubble as much as possible. But at this point, just like what you're saying, Craig, it is, this is, this is the time at which we Walt Disney World fans hardcore look at, okay, why? What what does it benefit us? Mm-hmm. And and it's time to weigh out our options because, like you said, a lot of those things that made it so obvious to be able, you know, of course you want to stay on property, are mm-hmm. magically going away now. They are. And it's yeah. so sad. Yeah. But it is. I was even going to say, like, is that some people be like, well, no, I still have to be on property so I can have Stacy. And well, no, you can't Stacey have Stacy. Stacy yeah, is so. left the building. Stacey. Yeah, Stacy, even Stacy is, is gone. Wow. It's yeah. just little, little by little, there's so much being chipped away. And that's not that, you know, the experience of still visiting Walt Disney World and the theme parks mm-hmm. is still just purely incredible. And the, the, dining available and the immersive experiences that they offer are still just second to none. But yeah, with that one little section, it's, it's getting a little dicey. And that's why even like, I know more and more people now that are doing split stays between universal and Disney, but not, not talking about going into the universal parks, just splitting their hotel stay up and staying at Universal's hotels and then just driving over. That gets a lot easier when you have an annual pass so you don't have to worry about parking at the theme parks when you're traveling back mm-hmm. over and such. But uh, I, you know, I I get I get why people are migrating off property and I don't blame them cuz I'd be the same way. I'm I'm the same I am the same way when it comes to going out to Disneyland unless unless it's for work or if it's a very special occasion. I'm off property. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I know that's a, it's a lot easier to say there because there's only three hotels on property and then it's all surrounded by it, but it's not even, it's not even like a question in my brain. It's, I know, I know off the top of my head, five hotels that are fabulous in a perfect location that I am more happy with than dishing out an extra three to $400 a night just to be like, Oh, I'm just slightly closer and I have those Disney touches around. At some point you have to put a price on and be like, is is it actually is it actually worth it? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think I think I, I understand now. I, I used to I used to be the opposite with Walt Disney World. Didn't understand anyone who would who would say, Oh, the experience of staying on one ninety two is just as good as staying on property. I say you're absolutely crazy. One ninety two is a complete dump and nightmare (laughs) sorry to offend anyone on that but it's i don't i don't like a lot of 192 i just don't care for it but yeah you know what if the price is right then (laughs) come on down good bob barker vacation complexes there Mm -hmm. like formosa gardens which is like yeah off right off of 192 that i feel like are resorts in them are 
are like some of them have water parks in them. They're just like crazy. Oh, the Margarita now, yeah. Has a new one, yeah. Um, no, so there's a lot, but yeah. They, they've come a long way. They've come a long, long way versus in, you know, just the being like. The meth lab exploded a couple years ago. <laughs> I was going to oh mention that, too. Not even, it's not even a joke. There was yeah. a meth lab that exploded. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it, right outside of Hollywood Studios. Yeah. It's not there no more, so don't worry oh. about it. But. Yeah. Oh, it's like, it, I feel like not okay. people are a lot smarter now about saying, okay, maybe I shouldn't get the hotel that's right behind a wizard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, it's it has developed a lot better in the area. But one of the, another terrible tip, I would think, this one, for, for my opinion, if you're staying on site, if you did make the decision to ignore us and you, you're staying on site because you have to be on site, I think it's a terrible tip to say, don't even bother renting a car. Just rely on Disney transportation. That's that's what it's there for you. You're paying for that. I think that is absolutely terrible advice. I think the only place you should be taking Disney transportation to is you should be taking a bus to Magic Kingdom. But beyond that, you should be driving your car everywhere else because for the most part, you can get around so much easier by car. And unless unless you're staying at like Hollywood Studios in that area in between Epcot and Hollywood Studios at the Boardwalk, Beach Club, Yacht Club, all that, that's hard to argue because you have you have those there. And I know the Skyliner has made things a little bit more accessible, but I don't know. I, I still I, I like the the freedom and luxury of not having to rely on buses or other transportation. You just go and jump in your car and you can get to where you're going. The exception being Magic Kingdom, where, yeah, that, that's your big disadvantage. You go into the parking lot and then all of a sudden, like, okay, now I have to take the monorail or ferry boat to get where I'm going. It's so much easier to just get dropped off at the bus right outside of the Magic Kingdom gates and you're there. But the rest of the parks, you know, again, unless you're staying in that specific spot. But if you're if you're at Animal Kingdom... And you're considering bussing around everywhere you're going or the all-star sports, I would think again, I would, I would probably invest in a rental car. That's just my opinion. I think Denny disagrees, but yeah, I don't mind the buses. I kind of like the buses. The buses are part of the mystique of getting to stay here at Walt Disney World. At least, you know, that's, that's what I feel like. I like getting on the buses. I think it's like, Ooh, I'm, I'm going somewhere fun. I'm going to go have an adventure. Even if I'm just park hopping, I like to hop on the bus and yeah, it might take me, it takes me a little bit longer than I am going to, when I'm driving. But if I'm visiting here, then I'm having to rent a car and I'm having to pay to park if I'm on property. And so, or I'm having to fill up the gas tank, whatever. Um, So I don't mind the buses. Yes, I know I need to take them, you know, a good deal ahead of wherever I want to be at the time. And I might know that they're going to throw in a a few stops depending on where my room is or what building my room is in. But I I enjoy the buses. I'm I'm time is money, though. Time is money. Definitely. Uh, Valid. I, I know I have been in this spot with my family, and I'm sure mm-hmm. everyone at this table, except for Rhino, is too, where you were late for a dining reservation that you even left like two hours for. You're like, I'll have plenty of time, and the buses won't fail me, and you still are late for that dining reservation at Walt Disney World. I, mm-hmm. I've had it happen to me before with that that allowance of time, but you know what? When you're driving your, on your own car, on your own schedule... Mm-hmm. You don't run into that as much. You're not, you're you're not at at the you know at the expense of of what the bus schedule ends up being or how long it takes to get around. And yeah, I don't. It's it's buses just don't become magical because they're at Walt Disney World. Mm. That's not how it works. I know Jackie is, thinks otherwise, what? but it's not. <laughs> they're not the most magical buses on earth. I thought they were. Oh, Craig, you've ruined it. <laughs> I'm sorry if I ruined buses. It. I just, I, I am, <laughs> you know, I, I love, I love a good boat ride. I love a good leisurely boat ride. Yes. I, I love a good Skyliner ride. I'll mm-hmm. even enjoy the monorail to an extent. I don't enjoy anything about busing around Walt Disney World unless it's getting me to the Magic Kingdom a lot quicker. Beyond that, no. I mean... I'm trying to think like I, it is a little bit more magical to arrive at the magic kingdom bus depot than it is at any of the others. Cause the other ones feel like they're 15 miles away and, or maybe just five, but 
I, I'll never forget the first time I drove my vehicle on Walt Disney World property. I couldn't actually believe how little time it took to drive from Old Key West to the Magic Kingdom. I, I couldn't believe it because the bus took so, so long. And I had this theory that Disney bus drivers must like take some crazy different route than what, you know, the fastest A to B because it took so much longer. And I was like, well, maybe it's because they want to play the little, you know, thing on there, the little magical thing that you listen to, the little recording that you listen to when you're on the bus and you're do to do. But, you know, at the same time, I don't want to, when we used to come here on vacation, on a real vacation, legitimately, like driving a vehicle is one of those grown up real life things. And you guys know me and you know that I like to leave all of that out <laughs> when I'm at Walt Disney World. So I would say that I, I enjoy the buses too. I enjoy being footloose and fancy free and not having to deal with my very own vehicle from my real life as opposed to Disney magical buses and transportation that are from my fantasy mm -hmm. life when I'm here on vacation. <laughs> uh, you, you feel free to do that. When I jump in my car, I I pull up all my Disney music on my iPhone and I start playing it and I'm not hearing, you know, I'm not hearing yelling and screaming in the background and I'm not smelling other people besides myself. I'm and I'm having a more pleasant Disney experience that's, oh. that that uh, is probably what what more people would actually want. But that's that's just you have fun with your 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 bus ride you have fun with it we will yes Good. jackie you and yes, i will go ride on, on the bus, bus and be yep. happy and mm -hmm. those wheels will go round and round they will they yep wipers on the bus mm -hmm. <laughs> oh that's what we've resorted to yeah. <laughs> showing up singing nursery rhymes yes uh, fantastic fantastic i think another terrible tip to give people we've kind of dwelled on this one a little bit before but uh, more in the sense of don't overdine but I think a ter terrible advice to give to people is you have to do table service restaurants mm -hmm. while you're in Walt Disney World. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's it's terrible advice. Um, just you know, there if you see a menu that looks good, go to that restaurant. Don't go to it because you're like, I need to do a table service, a quick service, or and that's how it has to be because you have dinner at a nice restaurant and you have lunch somewhere quick. It, it doesn't have to be that. Just eat. Eat where it sounds mm -hmm. good because there's a lot of times I'll be going through table service menus on my Disney experience, looking at them like, oh, I want to have a nice meal on property. What's what's something that I could go to? And I'm looking at I'm looking at the dishes and I'm like I I I'm feeling like I need to eat here because it's a sit down restaurant that's available, but I don't actually want to eat anything here. Am I? And I mean that's at least what I deal with, but I think I think a lot of people too say that like okay well we need to plan some some big meals out i'd say don't 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 worry about that mm -hmm. just eat eat whatever sounds good if cosmic rays looks like the best menu to you in the world you eat there every single day and you enjoy it yeah yeah i think a lot of i think a lot of pressure i agree with that too craig because a lot of people that are planning put in a lot of pressure they put a lot of pressure on dining and mm -hmm. You know, you just have to eat something to keep your body going, right? You just need some energy. So, yeah, like, I mean, it's if you talk to a lot of Disney fans and you get opinions on it, yeah, at some point in time, you're going to hear someone tell you like, oh, be our guest. You, you have to go and, and have that experience. And, you know, I think we've said over the years on this on on all the things that we do on the Dis, it's like, well, maybe not. I don't mm -hmm. think you really do have to do that. I think I think that's the case for a lot a lot of restaurants and because dining is so subjective it's really hard to you know it's really hard to try to push people in that way and say well you have to eat here it's a must eat here mm -hmm. I don't know if I would say that about any singular Walt Disney World restaurant that it is an absolute you must eat here because everyone is so different in their taste well and now we're starting to see quick service restaurants that are offering 
table service caliber food. And I think, Rhino, I think you would agree with Satuli Canteen. And I know we've talked about it mm -hmm. a gajillion times, but for good reason. Like, it is legitimately good food. And you can kind of craft the experience. Also, if you need a, a calm, quiet, cool space, Satuli is that. Like, it is, it's a little bit, of, well, inside <laughs> sometimes, inside with the music and stuff. Normally when I'm in there, it's not, too hellacious, but, um, but I, I mean, just the food there and it, it, you can mobile order it. it. Like it's, it's easier to obtain than a, a table service reservation. So, and as, and as the quick service restaurants continue to hopefully make good choices in that direction and kind of up their game, hopefully it'll get even easier and easier to, to say, you know what, maybe some of that pressure can be off. I don't have to worry about getting all those table service ADRs yeah. 60 days out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Lots of yes. Uh, well, yeah, my friend was here this last weekend, and, and she hadn't seen any of that stuff. And so first thing we did when we went to Animal King was go eat there, and she, like, loved it. And so that's Good. why I'm like – yeah, it's. I completely agree with you because we we were saying the same thing where we like we were realizing we weren't eating a lot the day before. We were like, "Why are we so worn down?" And we're like, "Oh, we actually didn't eat a lot because we're like sharing stuff as we go and stuff." And um, no, she she even said when I was bringing her to the airport, um, she was like, oh, "I really liked that, you know, the the crispy tofu that we got at um, Satchley." And I'm like, "Yeah, I was." I was she liked that and she liked the docking bay seven at at galaxy's edge and i was like i do wish there was more places because she was like i felt like it was really good food and it was really like she was you know she's not a big uh meat eater or any of that stuff so she was like it felt relatively at least in my mind healthier options too and i was like yeah i said i think a lot of the quick service places do have a lot to offer now so it's like it's not like you're just like oh i'm just going to be eating crap if i don't go to a dining reservation so Plus dining reservations, it's like depending on how many people you have, depending on how many people are in the restaurant, depending how slow or fast the service is, it's not like a quick commitment. It's mm -hmm. like you got you're pulling a big chunk out of the day again. So it's like not something I want to be doing on my tickets time. Like I want to mm -hmm. be doing it at Disney Springs or after hours somewhere else. I don't want to be doing it while I'm supposed to be in the park, like enjoying that stuff. You know, I get I get why people do it, but I don't know. There's no restaurant in a park. That's like a sit down restaurant that I can think of where I'm like, yeah, I would say pull that time out to have that experience and go sit down there for as long as it takes and have that meal. I've not I'd, like there are restaurants, sit down restaurants in the parks that I like, but there's none where I'd be like, yeah, take the time out of that hundred and something dollar ticket that you have to go spend another, you know, 50, 60 dollars at or whatever. I'd I, rather just eat the food, the quick service food. Yeah, uh, well, I, I do. And that's in terms of the food quality, I would agree with you. I don't think there's anywhere that is like, I, I don't think I've had think, a single like, meal that I'm like, that it's like, this is, you have to do this because every single decision you could make will be an excellent decision and you're always going to have the best meal. But sometimes experiences transcend it. Like the meal that you will get at Sci Fi Dine-In is not a it's not a bad meal by any means is it overpriced yes but that is a one of a kind experience that prime time. you would think or prime time too oh the same gosh, you, yes. you know we all have our favorite mm -hmm. comfort food we all love our our we all love good comfort food and it's not hard to find comfort food at diners and mm -hmm. and with your family or just at, at tons of restaurants outside of Disney, but it's the full experience that ties in that, that sometimes makes those better. But, you know, like I, I was looking at the California grill menu one night, something that uh, has been raved about on this show or not this show, sorry, but on, on our shows over and over and over again. And I looked at it and I'm like, there's not one single thing on this menu right now that is even slightly tempting me to go spend 50, 40, 50, $60 on an entree mm -hmm. besides the view. And it's a great view, but you know, That's with, so funny that you say that. if I can, if I can, uh, you know, I, I know it's different than quick service food. There is nothing that compares at docking bay seven to a really great piece of steak up at California grill. But I, it's just not, you know, it's not always necessary. I think mm -hmm. it's just, it's not. Mm -mm. It's so funny that you say that about California Grill because the last time I had dinner there was about 
two and a half years ago. And there wasn't anything on the menu that I was in the mood for either. And I ordered a flatbread and a wedge salad. I, I got two appetizers and that was, that was that. And I was as happy as a clam Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that view. And that was, cause that's the thing. Like sometimes we put a lot of pressure on, on the food and Disney has really upped their game mm -hmm. at their, at their quick service places. And yeah, it's, you know, but if you want that view and you want to see those fireworks that night, that's an experience that I would take the time out for. There's also, I mean, we could probably do a whole show on on uh, restaurants inside of mm -hmm. theme parks, you know, that are worth that are worth taking, taking time. the time. Dining Channel about that could do that maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard of one? Yeah. There, there, yes, there absolutely is that uh, we will never do it. So we'll just sprinkle these conversations yeah. on this one. <laughs> yes, so that way we don't get committed into a, a long running uh, dining show series that uh, covers that because we we are busy enough with everything that we're doing. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll just go with the sprinkle sprinkle yeah. approach here yeah. and there. Pixie dust. I have yeah. advice about shoes um, because I feel like the worst advice you can give to somebody is being like, get a new pair of shoes before you come, or like you know whatever. Like I'm not saying getting i've made this mistake i like to dress the part whenever i go to a park right like when especially like california for me specifically like so i like to have options i like to bring multiple so when people are like just bring the clothes you need for the day i don't think that's a good advice because for one in orlando florida like it the humidity has been so intense like i have started to pay, put an extra shirt folded in my bag zip locked up in my backpack that i will like put on at you know like if we're if we end up staying in the park a little bit longer because you just want that little bit of a fresh fresh moment but for shoes that's just like because that's part of my thing you guys know i love to change my sneakers with whatever outfit i'm wearing and, and all that stuff and so I have made the mistake of being like, oh, I'm going to wear my special shoes, you know, this time, these ones that I don't wear that often. And then I wear them at the beginning of a day that then ends up being a 12 hour day that I didn't expect to be a 12 hour day. And the thing with newer shoes is the bend isn't quite in there. And you don't realize, I never realized how much it's hitting my toes. And so like I caused myself to get blisters along the top of my toes. And uh, I was like, well, don't, don't bring shoes to wear in at a theme park, but also like, I'm not saying don't bring those new shoes. Just make sure you bring the ones that you were wearing right before there because you you, you might be like – because I've had ones where I've put on and I've been like, these are great. I love the new support I have, all that stuff. But then I just need one day in my older shoes where I'm just walking or what feels like I'm walking barefoot on, on the pavement. But yeah. that's a big deal for me. And then also the clothes. I always say bring options. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I bring clothes to two different two different clothes for each day. My mother – had it in me that I was going to die uh, <laughs> some way or another during travel. And so the thing is, I like to always have a bunch of extra pairs of underwear, twice as many socks as I need. And I like to have a day and a nighttime outfit for each day. It's anxiety traveling. It is absolutely horrible to live this way and be riddled this way when you are packing for a trip. But man, am I happy when I have them? Because then also, while you've been eating on that theme park, all that sodium and everything gets into you and you just yeah. start, you are like, wow, all my clothes don't fit the way I do. And you want to be comfortable. But also, that's another thing. My friend was like, well, I'm wearing my comfortable clothes. And I was like, you're wearing jeans. It is 100 degrees outside <laughs> and there is humidity. Those jeans are going to be soaked in a few minutes and you are not going to be comfortable. So you need to, you need to, you need to invest in some shorts or something, but they don't like how they feel. I, I know what it's like to not feel comfortable in your own skin. So it's kind of yeah, it's walking so that balance to find the things where you're like, okay, I'm comfortable enough in this and I'm accepting that I'm going to be soaking wet, but like you, you got to find that balance. It's very important. I agree. Uh, Cause yeah. there's nothing worse. Yeah. I, I can't just throw things on. I don't know. It's something, <laughs> something's wrong in my brain, but. Also, it's inappropriate to show off angles, so Agreed. jeans are preferred. Well, I always wear the high tops. That's why, you, so you can't see my ankles. Oh, so my that, solution. The workaround. There. Yeah, yeah. You know. Now that's a that is that is a good tip. That is a good tip because I was just laughing in my head the entire time thinking another terrible tip. Get matching shirts for your entire family <laughs> so you can feel unique and different and special. Aww. 
all see. Hey, I, I, we have done that. Our family, we've had the matching shirts before, and it was mm. Grandpa who picked them all out, and we wore them, and we got so many compliments on it. They were so cute. Mm-hmm. It was just Mouseketeers. I, I like the really Goofy cute. movie ones that family had that saw us at the Food and Wine Festival. That's, I, oh. I was completely joking. Oh, oh with yeah. that, oh. I'm not. I'm. It was just. It was running. As I started thinking about clothes, I was like, "What other? What other bad clothes advice are there with it?" And that that popped into my my head that I shouldn't have said anything at all because now it's inevitably going to be. Craig doesn't like matching shirts. <sighs> Get rid of him. I wear matching shirts with my wife, and it's we all do it. We mm-hmm. all do it. And you know what? It's, it's about it's about having the best time of your life. But yes. is there any other terrible advice that you want to give to anyone? I think we've covered everything I had thought of. Okay. Yeah. Well, one one that I've brought up on shows in the past, but I think it, it it's probably worth reiterating here. Don't plan a day of rest in your vacation don't or or an afternoon of rest or even an hour of rest during your park don't do it during vacation just don't because you just want to you know burn it to the ground by the end of your vacation (laughs) that's the goal no it's not (laughs) no it's not please work in a little bit of rest i know if you've only got three days to be here it you know you can't give up an entire day um but maybe an hour or two just to sit your butt on a lounge chair by the pool and just breathe, or even to go back to your room, or if you're staying off property, just to wherever, go back to the house and just be in the air conditioning for just a little bit and have a glass of tea or whatever, put your feet up and then go back refreshed. Like Bob used to always say, you know, take a nap, go back to your resort and take a nap. Well, there was wisdom in that, Mm -hmm. right? Um, It cost a lot of money to get here. So you really want to be able to be with it enough to enjoy it. And however long it took to get here, all that travel and all the stress of packing beforehand, all that jazz, it's, it's good just to have a little room to breathe just a bit here and there. I mean, that is terrible advice, though, because now (laughs) people will lose out on time to go and do things and have fun. Go, go, go. It's if you're not constantly moving, if you're not first or last, (laughs) to quote the the wisest race car driver ever in the existence of time. If you're not first or last. Yeah. If you're not first or last. And that's a that's a good way to end this. So we're we're back. What's that? (laughs) Good job. Good job. No, mixing that's racing a different one. metaphors now. <laughs> well, that's, that's the most famous race movies. car in the world? Uh, no, the fa- famous mm-hmm. race car driver. Uh, oh, oh, the one oh, and only Ricky, Ricky Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> so, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, wrong way. It's it's fine. It's okay. Uh, we're back on the rails though. So thank you so much to everyone for this fun conversation. Uh, you have things that you think are terrible trip advice for people out there. You leave those in the comments. Uh, as long as other as well as other video suggestions, ideas, uh, just random commentary. Leave that all in the YouTube comments. And while you're there, also make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you're hitting that thumbs up if you're enjoying it. And also if you're listening to this, please make sure to subscribe wherever you listen and leave us five star ratings and reviews if you're listening through apple podcasts and if you want to support us consider booking your next vacation through dreams unlimited travel get that free no obligation quote today at dreams unlimited travel.com but that's going to do it for us this week i really hope you enjoyed it we'll see you next time we go off the rails take care bye bye